Well, today on the Boiling Point, we're going to be talking about the different types of traps. Now, speaking of traps, uh, Jude Wolf over on the weekly Boiler Tips is actually going through all of the different uh, traps and uh, telling a little bit about how they work. So make sure you check that out. But first, you'll get a really good view of all the different types today on the Boiling Point. Welcome to the Boiling Point. I'm with Gerald Blaine, uh, Director of Sales for all of our service and projects divisions. Um, Gerald, talking a little bit about condensate uh, today. Um, tell me a little bit about what happens from steam, how it goes to condensate, and then why do we want to actually get this to return? Well, the whole idea of uh, condensate is we're going from the steam process, and once we give up that that heat that we're trying to transport, mm -hmm. it immediately turns to condensate. And it's that change in phase that allows us to capture that heat. So what we don't want to do is waste that heat. Uh, there's still a fair amount of BTU content. It could be you know 200 plus degrees, mm -hmm. uh, maybe as low as 140, 160, depending on what temperatures we're operating at. But we want to get that back, get it back to the boiler, back to the feed system so that we don't have to create that energy again. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you dump that condensate, that's what you end up doing. Uh, yeah. There are applications where there's no choice about it. You mm -hmm. have to dump it. Right. But in cases where we don't have to, we want to maximize that opportunity. Okay. Now, there's ways to get rid of, uh, or actually to get the condensate to return. One of the ways is traps. Now, we want to talk about four different types of traps. <clears throat> where First of all is thermodynamic. Um, second would be the thermostatic. Um, then there's also the float, and then there's also the inverted bucket. So why don't we start with the thermodynamic and talk about what that actually is. Well, I don't have one here to show today, but it's, it's, a, it's a relatively small uh, type of a trap. It works on a mechanical feature where it utilizes a high and low pressure zones where it moves a disc up and down. Uh, and based on the velocities uh, and the differential of pressures going through this trap, it'll either be stopping the condensate and the steam from flowing, or it'll be releasing it to come back and return. Um, for me, uh, they're a little bit problematic. It's not my go-to type mm. of a trap. Mm -hmm. uh, they're out there. A lot of people use them, and they use them because they are cheap. Mm -hmm. So, And the problem that, that I have with them is you really have to pay attention to where you put them. They're kind of particular. If you have low or high pressure uh, flows, mm -hmm. they can function incorrectly. Okay. And uh, they can be real noisy. The one thing you can always tell is when they are, I don't want to say necessarily working, mm -hmm. but operating. Mm -hmm. And I say that if it's cycling a lot, you'll hear it chattering quite a bit. And you'll get a little bit of steam leak through that, so they can be a little bit costly. Mm -hmm. uh, they're better than not having a return, right. but they're a little more expensive to operate. Okay. Well, why don't we go um, over maybe to the float? Right here, yep, the float. This one is, is great for processes, meaning that you have it at your heat exchanger or whatever a device is utilizing the steam. And the reason that is, it's got, it's got a real reliable idea where, where the float's moving up and down. Every time the condensate builds, it'll open and let their condensate go back. But in the case of startups or maybe uh, this particular uh, device that it's working for, is off for periods of time and maybe it cools down and it gets uh, air trapped in there. Mm -hmm. The thermostat uh, working off of temperature will allow that air to evacuate and get it back to functioning normally. Mm. So it's pretty unique in, in that process type of environment. So we use them quite a bit for, for that. Okay, and then we go to the bucket. Uh, the bucket mm -hmm. is widely used. It's been around a long time. Um, it's a device that when the uh, steam is coming through and you're getting the condensing and the condensate, the bucket is literally upside down in here. And as the steam builds underneath, it causes the bucket to float up. And when it's floating up, it's releasing some air and it's letting the condensate pass through. The only challenge uh, really with these is they're uh, somewhat susceptible to water hammer. Even this cheaper version that we didn't have a, a one is really not susceptible to water hammer. These can crush the bucket if you get a good slug of water. And they can be challenging in startup because they have to be primed. You have to have that condensate and that bubble in the, in the bucket in order for it to operate correctly. Mm -hmm. And as far as my witness and my research, uh, they do use a little bit of steam. Some people will tell you they don't. I'll tell you they use a couple of pounds of steam an hour. Mm -hmm. 
and move over to the uh, thermostatic. Now this is a, um, a trap that I know that you really like and a lot of our uh, guys that are out there that are maybe doing uh, steam trap uh, studies, studies and, and things like that, that they, they know that this thing here save them a little bit of money. So why don't you talk about that? We do. This is, is one of our go-tos. Uh, this isn't necessarily the best in terms of like what I was talking about process, mm -hmm. but in terms of uh, drip and trace, this is great. It's uh, repairable in line, so you don't have to tear everything out. Uh, but one thing that it does uh, really well is it does a uh, subcooling process. So it has a capsule in here that when it's hit with the hot steam, boils faster than water, and it triggers it immediately to close up. And as it subcools uh, to a temperature below saturation, it'll release. So we're not getting any live steam releasing afterwards because of that subcooling process. Mm. Now, it does that subcooling uh, and it allows it to back up a little bit in the line before it takes back off. Mm -hmm. But because of that, uh, we call this a zero leak trap and it saves a lot of money and pays for itself. Awesome. All right, well, there you have it. A little bit about some condensate return and maybe how you can get that return back into the system, saving you money, saving you time, keeping your equipment operating well. We'll see you next time on The Boiling Point. Appreciate Gerald hanging out with us today, talk a little bit about condensate return, and of course, all of these steam traps is what takes care of that condensate. If you'd like to know more, make sure you go out, check out our Boiler University classes. Jude Wolf, Jeff Bartow would love to talk about the traps and the system, how you can save money, better your operation. Well, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter if you don't mind, maybe even share a video. And we'll see you next time on The Boiling Point.